Baruchem Aboyim. Thank you very much for coming. We are in our lecture series on Gematriot. Today we are going to discuss the uh, 21st letter of the Hebrew alphabet, a shin, which has a numerical value, Gematri of 300. Uh, the shin is one of the most sacred letters of the Hebrew alphabet. It represents two names of God. The name Shakai, again, I'm using a kuf instead of a dalit, shin dalit yud, the all-sufficient, unlimited one, and shalom, peace. When God created the world, it continued to grow until he said the word die, enough. With that word, God established fixed laws for his universe to protect the integrity of creation as he intended it to be. The name of God, Shin Dalid Yud, is what is written on the outside of our mezuzah. The letters of his name are an acronym for Shomer Delet Yisrael, he who protects the doors or houses of Israel, the Jewish people, what you would call our Jewish alarm system. The name Shalom, peace, denotes God as the essence of all harmony and perfection. He is called Ose Shalom, the maker of peace based on the Maral. The Maral sees the form of the three heads of the Shin as symbolizing two opponents standing at the two extreme sides of a controversy and the divine mediator in the middle. Now the number 300 relates to the themes within the number three. As it states in Kohelet, a three-ply cord is not speedily cut. During the time of the Shoftim, Gidon defeated the Midianites with an army of only 300 men. In the time of Dabanamela, King David, Avishai wielded a spear over 300 corpses. The same was said of Yavsham, Yashvam, who slew 300 men with his spear. Shimshon, Samson, brought havoc on the Pelishtim, on the Philistines, with 300 foxes. Nebuchadnezzar sent his general Nebuchadnezzar with 300 mules carrying iron hammers with which to break down the walls of Jerusalem. of Jerusalem. Paro, the pharaoh bathed in the blood of 300 children each day to cure his skin disease. There were some 300 laws, some say 3,000, that were forgotten when Moshe Benu died. They were reinstated by Asnel ben Kinas. King Yeshayahu was killed with 300 Egyptian arrows. For 300 years, the Jewish nation served idols in the days of the judges. Rameir gave over 300 fox parables. Shlomo HaMelech, King Solomon, the wisest of all men, had 3,000 parables for every mitzvah in the Torah. When the Levites were chosen to replace the firstborn in the desert after the sin of the golden calf, there were 300 firstborn Levites that did not, could not redeem anyone else. In the Atbash, again, where we exchange, we mentioned many times, the olive for the for the top first letter that began for the last letter, the Bay's second letter, for the second to the last letter, Shin, called the Atbash. The gematria of the name of God of Mercy, which is 26, then becomes 300. And so too when the name of God Elohim is spelled out, you spell the laying the Aleph, Aleph, Lamed, Fe, Lamed, Lamed, Mem, Dalet, and so on. Again, the gematria is 300. The Shin is made up of three Vavs with the Yud on top of each one. The Medrash interprets the three branches of the Shin as alluding to the three worlds in which man lives. This world, the Messianic era, and the world to come. To the three parts of man, the life-giving Nefesh, the Neshama, which is the soul, and the Guf, the body in which man's survival depends. And this connects to the three sanctities found in the world. God Almighty, the holiness of the Shabbat, and the holiness of Yisrael. Also the three partners that bring one into this world, God, one's father, and one's mother. The Gemara of the Talmud in Shabbos 104a states that Shin alludes to the word Sheker, falsehood. Yet we have mentioned earlier that the Shin stands for one of God's, God's names. So we see from this that even the loftiest concepts can be dragged down if men corrupt them. So despite its sublime connotation, when Shin connects itself with the Kuf, 
again, which means monkey, the mimic, mindless mimic, and the resh, the rasha, the evildoer. The combination of the three becomes sheker, falsehood. The only way that a lie can have credibility is by attaching itself to a truth. Psika Rabbi Sayu states, God created tooth, truth. Falsehood is man's creation. The letter shin has four different forms. There is a shin with a dot above the right column, a shin with a dot above the left column, a shin with four columns instead of three, and a silent shin. When the dot is on the right side, this alludes to the idea of chesed, the concept of kindness. When the dot is on the left side, the shin is pronounced sin, and this alludes to gavura, judgment or severity. These two forms are illustrated by the word shar, gate, and seor, hair. The shin with the dot on the right, shar, allows people to pass in and out, an aspect of freedom of movement, chesed. The shin is full of energy, potential, and benevolence. The shin with the dot on the left side, sin, alludes to severity and judgment, which connects to the words seor, hair. Hair has a life force, but it is weak. One can pull out or cut a strand of hair and not feel any pain, in contrast to one cuts or bruises any other part of one's body. A hair is rooted in a follicle, a concentrated, restricted area. Each follicle stands alone, much like evil, that is selfish and concerned only about itself. An evil person feels that sin is as inconsequential as a strand of hair. Now the shin with four columns is found on the left side of our tefillin that is worn on the head. The four columns represent the four mothers of Israel, Sarah, Rivka, Rachel, and Leah. The shin on the right side of the tefillin of the head represent the three fathers of Israel, Abraham, Yitzchak, and Yaakov. The mother's education is compared to the letters of Luchot and the fathers to the letters of the Torah. Now a mother's education, if connected to the earliest education, is connected to the earliest education of a child. It is therefore represented by the Luchot, which were engraved into the stone tablets. The father's education, on the other hand, is compared to the letters of the Torah, which were written with ink on parchment, which can easily be erased. Now even though the father's education plays an important part in the development of the child, it is the mother who has more impressionable and permanent effect on the child's growth and direction. According to Kabbalah, the three-headed shin alludes to this world, whereas the four-headed shin alludes to the world to come. Now the three vavs also correspond to the three divisions of the Jewish people, Kohanim to the right, Leviim to the left, and Yisraelim in the middle. In the future, the fourth vav, corresponding to the righteous converts, will become independently revealed in recognition of their special role and unique merit in the bringing of Mashiach to Keno. May you come quickly in our time. The three vavs can also represent the three pillars upon which the world rests. Torah, Avodah, and Gemilat Chasadim. Torah, prayer, and good deeds. We know that the number 100 represents perfection. Scoring 100 on exam is considered perfect. The same would hold true for Judaism. If a person possesses three unwavering lines of thought, speech, and action, then he is perfect. He is then represented by the number 300. All of his three columns are 100%. The word kaper, atonement, has a numerical value of 300. When the letter shin is spelled out shin yud nun, it has a numerical value of 360. Now the average solar month has 30 days. 12 times 30 is 360. So the atonement of Yom Kippur has an effect on the entire year, Hashana, which has a gematria of 360, the year. The three regalim, festivals of Pesach, Shavuot, and Sukkot, are connected to the four seasons. And according to the Gemara, Talmud Rosh Hashanah, there are three Rosh Hashanahs reflecting the Shin with three lines. The first of Nisan is the New Year for Kings and Holidays. The first of Tishrei is the New Year for Calendar Years, for the tithing of animals and for planting. And the 15th of Shvat is the New Year for Trees. 
Now, according to the first commentary on the mission of the first of El, is actually the New Year for animal tithings, which would make it the fourth New Year, again reflecting the Shin with four lines. The fourth form of the letter Shin is silent. The silent Shin is found in the name of Yisachar, which contains two Shins, but only the first is pronounced. Yisachar and Zvulun, Zvulun were brothers, and they made an agreement between them that Zvulun, the younger brother, would support Yisachar, his older brother, in his learning, with half of his income. And Yisachar would in turn <clears throat> share half of his spiritual reward for learning Torah with Zvulun. So the first shin in the name of Yisachar represents the active partner, Yisachar, and the second shin represents the silent partner, Zvulun. Now the name Yisachar can be broken down into two words, Yesh, Schar. There is reward. The last Mishnah in the tractate Uksin states, in the future, God will give each tzaddik 310 worlds. The question becomes, why 310? What does that correlate to? So there are 613 Torah commandments and an additional seven rabbinic commandments that are very important, such as lighting Shabbos candles, which equals 620. We have a belief that even in heaven, we study Torah with a chavrusa, with a study partner. So each of the partners receives half of the reward. 620, cut in half, 310 to each. Now in the name of his father, Reb Levi Yitzchak Schneerson, the Rebbe explains that there are two levels to the Torah. The level that is revealed, the Talmud and, ha and Halacha, and the level that is concealed, Kabbalah and Hasidut. The revealed level is pronounced, alluding to the first shin of Yisachar, but the second shin, the concealed level, remains silent. When Adam, of, when first man was created, he was at first a lifeless mannequin. Then God blew into his nostrils a breath of life, yipa piyapa vruach and he became a living being. The Zohar tells us that Kedusha, sanctity, enters our body through our noses. In fact, our noses are shaped like an upside-down shin. There is an allusion to this in the Torah. A sacrifice is called the reach nichoach l'ashem, a sweet aroma to God. When Nadav and Avil, the two illustrious sons of Aram, were killed with fire from heaven, it entered their bodies through their nostrils. And from them it went to the Mizbeach, to the altar, and consumed the sacrifices. With the help of God, may we use the power of the 21st letter of the Hebrew alphabet to connect to all that is holy, and with that help to bring in the coming of Mashiach Sekenu quickly and in our time. Thank you very much for coming. Shabbat Shalom.